Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining us for another edition of The Bite Cooks. Um, it's been a great privilege for me to be here every day, bumping around in the kitchen with all kinds of buddies of mine, good friend, great chef for the Puget Sound area. It's been nothing but fantastic, learning all kinds of tricks of the trade. And uh, so pay attention, because you might be learning something as well. Who knows? My next guest chef is Vivian Peterson. She's from a wonderful restaurant called Divine. Hello, Vivian. Welcome to the show. Hello. I get to kiss the chef. Are I'm you a chef? I'm actually a cook. Oh, you're not a chef? No. You're a cook. She's cute. <laughs> <laughs> she's not a chef, she's a cook. Okay. Yes. And tell us a little bit about Divine. Tell, tell everybody about Divine. Where is Divine? It's located on 80th and Roosevelt. Okay. In the Maple Leaf neighborhood. Uh, we've been open three and a half years. It's what kind of restaurant is it? Uh, Greek food. Modern Greek cuisine. In case you haven't noticed, she's Greek. Look at the ensemble, she's beautiful. Look at this decoration, <laughs> fabulous. Um, so How many seats, how big of a restaurant is it? Well, we do catering and private dining, and uh, we, we have a beautiful secret garden patio. A secret garden mm -hmm. patio? Sounds like something I wanna go to. <laughs> I don't know about you, but. And so what uh, kind of food do you serve? I mean, obviously Greek food, any things you wanna tell us about the menu? Yeah, we have about 65% organic, um, we have a beautiful lamb, rack of lamb, and uh, mezes, octop mm -hmm. octopus. Sure. Yeah. And Love octopus. salads and uh, lots of good stuff. So do you do all the cooking there? No. Who does Just the cooking? My chef. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> she has a chef. Everybody should have a chef in their home. I, I just I just thing. go in the kitchen and have fun. Good. Yeah. So you, you give him the good recipe of Greece. Yes. Is he Greek? Yes, okay. we do and like handmade dolmades, handmade spanakopitas, teropitas, wow. and I learned all this from my mom and my grandma, and just growing up, you know, making all the food at home. I bet it's a very popular restaurant. Yeah, we are. Yes, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Do you have band playing at night and men dancing around? I mean, <laughs> you know, I can't help thinking, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm totally there on the beach in the Mediterranean. I love Greece. In case you've never been to Greece, it's one of the most gorgeous country in the world, surrounded by all these islands in the Mediterranean. Oh, yeah. it's beautiful. It is beautiful. So, on to the dish of the day. What are you making for us today? Today, I'm making our spiral spanakopita, which won first prize entree here at the Bite of Seattle last year. Ooh, congratulations. That's, that's something. And it's one of our most popular appetizers. And, uh, is it hard to make? The first question people are going to wonder is, you know, it's all Greek to me. I'm actually, just kidding, it's a bad joke. But <laughs> is it hard to make? No, actually what's great about this, it's easy uh, for entertaining. You know, you can, can make, you make it, it ahead. You can make it ahead of time, you could freeze it, and then bake it when you have guests over. And uh, that's why I love this, because it's a great home cook dish. So it's a great for entertainment, mm -hmm. and you can make it ahead. I mean, yeah. th those are great assets to a dish. So. Mm -hmm. So how do we start? What well, do we do? Number one, we start off with a shot of vuzo. <laughs> a girl at my heart. Is every Greek has to. I think I'm going to be Greek in a minute. <laughs> and we say sineyamas. Sineyamas. Yamas. Okay. <laughs> she just tricked me, didn't she? <laughs> I thought I was going to. <laughs> that stuff is potent. <clears throat> wow, it tastes beautiful, like anise and... Mm -hmm. mm. A good way to drink it is with ice. So it's got booze in it? What? I don't know, it feels like there is booze in it. Am I drinking <laughs> this? No, it's really... <laughs> she tricked me. I thought it was the whole thing you had to drink. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Ooh, that's nice. <laughs> I'm glad we don't have many more shows to go. <laughs> okay. I'm going to be dancing in a minute. <laughs> Thank you very much. That was great. The, the, the shot was fantastic. So, on to cooking now. On to cooking. <laughs> Normally in Greece, you go take a siesta after this. <laughs> I think, okay, so we turn this on. You want me to turn this on for mm -hmm. you? Beautiful. High? On high heat? Uh, sure. It is. And, um, I usually like to use Greek olive oil. <laughs> we had an Italian olive oil. Recent. I like to use Italian olive oil. <laughs> we had a Spanish. I want to use a Spanish olive oil. <laughs> I. I like oil, to use no. Corsican French olive oil. <laughs> olive oil has come from Greece. 
and everybody else has... I thought everything came from Greece originally. <laughs> I had a guy in my restaurant one day who said, well, we told you French how to cook. <laughs> I was like, really? <laughs> that must be a few years ago, because I didn't hear about that one. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, you know, I agree. I think, I think a lot of things come from Greece. and They have a lot of olive nafli on the whole plateau down there was absolutely gorgeous, giant fields of olive. Yes. It's beautiful down mm -hmm. there. Itia and all those places. Love it. So in the olive oil, what do we put? Well, scallions? We start off with the scallions. You want to saute your onions, your scallions, or you can use leeks. Um, it's up to you. This, this recipe is great because... Um, do you, I have a question. Do you cook a lot with leeks in, in Greek food? Yes, we do. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, wasn't, I wasn't aware of that. And we also, you know, instead of spinach, you can use uh, horta, which is like dandelion greens or chard or something else if you want to make it a little bit interesting instead of a spinach pie. So you would cook dandelion just like you cook yeah. onions? Okay. Just like you're doing Beautiful. this recipe. Yeah. You can make it, and we call it horta, hortopita instead Hortopitas. of spanakopita. But today I'm showing you guys how to make spanakopita. Okay. Okay, so. <laughs> did, you, did you notice? Uh, <laughs> she's still going to finish it, isn't she? <laughs> so I like a good spirited cook. <laughs> Um, well, this is how I cook, except the only difference is, is that I, See, like I, I I do all my prep ahead, so yeah. I have one free hand at all time when I'm cooking. Yeah. For that reason. Exactly. So I'm going to crack uh, four eggs. I like to use the organic brown eggs. And yes, an organic we like to, do, to use organic brown eggs, absolutely. Yeah. And, um, and then we need to melt the butter eventually. We need to melt the butter eventually. Maybe if I put it in a pot, it would melt. Sure. Is this the pot that was supposed to be melting the butter in? Or you can just microwave it. <laughs> She's very sweet, but... Microwave? What is that? I oh, heard, we have one. I heard that you said... I didn't even know we had one. I heard that you said uh, butter is... You yeah, can I'll, only microwave butter. Yes, I'll make you happy. I said I'll only use it for chocolate. The problem is I don't know what to do next. <laughs> I close the door, but then what do you do next? Here we go. She knows. I'll, I'll tend the onions. I know how to do that. Okay. What is that you're pulling out? This is the filo. Oh, filo. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Where can you get that? Anywhere in any frozen section of any store in America? Exactly. I thought so. And um, how many of you hate to work with filo, though? Oopsie. Not me, I don't hate it. I just it can be really hard to work with, isn't it? Yeah. It's it's really it's hard tricky, when yeah? it's frozen especially. Well you wanna wait till it thaws out, right? <laughs> you do. <laughs> <laughs> Usually. Otherwise you just make little rings of frozen filo dough. Okay. So we got some spinach here, but I've already taken the time to uh, cook them down? Cook it down. Did to you make cook them in water or in butter? Or right there. Oh, in here? Yeah. Ah, beautiful. You, so what you do is you just put your spinach in there. Chop it up, put it in here like that. Mm -hmm. But we can mix it. It doesn't awesome. matter. So, And then... Um, this is definitely a green dish. Yeah, if you I don't like vegetables that are greens, you're in trouble on that dish. This is good. And then we have some fresh chopped dill that you chopped can dill. add in there. Mm -hmm. So it gives it an anise flavor, mm -hmm. fennel flavor kind of idea. And then we do a little bit of sea salt. You don't want to put too much salt, but you want to put enough so that the spinach evaporates the water. Okay. You know? And then you do some black... Maybe a little spinach. Here you go. Oops. Black <laughs> pepper. <laughs> some black pepper. And... Then what we do is we put this in a bowl. Yeah, this, this in one. a bowl. Yeah, right here. Yep. So the spinach are cooked. The onions are sweated in olive oil. Mm -hmm. The other, um, the other sauteed spinach are added to it. And do then I need the, the stove to stay. Uh, nope. And then nope. you turn it off. And then we have two pounds of feta. This is what two pounds of feta looks like. How much? food are we making here? Two pounds of feta this is a is, lot of feta. Huh? I know, but this is only for six panacopitas. Okay. So we mix the whole thing together? Uh-huh. Okay. And then I beat the eggs. Awesome. 
So do you have a special store where you need to buy the feta? Is there a special feta? I mean, feta is a very Greek cheese. Is there a special mm -hmm. place where I should get my feta? If I'm uh, a consumer looking for a good feta, where do you guys get your feta? Well, we order ours from Yanni's. And is that possible for a consumer to go and buy it from him? No. No? Mm-mm. Yanni's. <laughs> I love that. No. That's a plain old no. But I'm going to call Yanni's and figure this out, because this is not cool. Yanni gives it to you and not to us. It's not about it. No, I'm just kidding. That's a great uh, connection. Is there any store that you know in town? Where do you go shopping when you're outside of the restaurant? Do you oh, go I, I love going to Whole Foods. So they have good? They have good feta. OK. And you can buy like French feta, Bulgarian feta, Israeli feta. You know, I no mean. Greek feta. <laughs> <laughs> she named every country around Greece, but not Greece. <laughs> What's that about? Well, actually, my favorite feta is the French feta. Is which one? French. Oh. Yes. Is that because of the cream? Yes. To mo more cream than in the uh, Greek feta. Yeah, but I mean, when I go to Greece, I love the feta there because it's just so soft and tasty, kind of like the sour taste. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. It's good. So what's next? Do we okay, over next. Here? So that's your filling. That's all you need to do for that. So this is so easy. Is it supposed to be that soft like this, or do you refrigerate it? No, it's supposed to be like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. If I was making this, I'd be like, hmm, I think I'm going to cool this off a little bit. But I guess not. No, you don't have to. That's why this is so I can't easy. wait to see a trick about Philo dough because uh, <clears throat> I've dealt with Philo dough for 30 years. And oh, my God. I'm like, why did the Greek invent <laughs> such a thin dough? Yeah, my grandma used to make this, handmade. She used to hand make it? Yeah. I saw somebody make it one by hand. In Portland, there's a man who makes it. Mm -hmm. He makes fresh filo dough. Mm -hmm. It's insane. It's a lot of work. Yep. That wasn't enough the first time? No, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so, so how, what's the trick? OK, there is, when I work with filo, I always have one big problem. Mm -hmm. It always dries out. You know, you, you're working on the sheet, yeah. and you get to the other sheets, and it's like, oh my God, this is drier, it breaks, and everything. Is there a, I, I, I was told, and I do that myself, keep a, a moist towel on top of my filo. Is mm -hmm. that what you do? Mm -hmm. Do you do that? Okay, good. Yeah. Or you need to learn how to work with it really fast. Great. So it doesn't dry out. I guess I'll go with the towel. Yeah. Because <laughs> I've been trying to work with the down thing. <laughs> so. But the thing is, the secret to phyllo is that you, you really have to make sure that your phyllo is not frozen. Otherwise, when it's frozen and not thawed out properly, it does, it stuff, it does stuff like this. Yeah. Like I it mean, breaks in the middle? Yeah. It's yeah. like this is not, this, this is, is not, not good. Yeah. Not thawed out enough. No. So not. what's a good way to thaw out phyllo? I mean, you, everybody buys phyllo. It's always frozen. How do you get it thawed out? You have to put it in the refrigerator for 24 hours. OK. Yeah. So don't forget, you buy your phyllo. You can't just take it out of the freezer and go, I'm going to make some uh, spana copita. No, you have to put it in the fridge for at least 24 hours so it thaws out professionally or correctly, I should say. Mm -hmm. Not professionally, correctly. And when you use it, it all is coming out. The sheets are separated and it comes out really nicely. It comes out very nicely. And cool. also, there's different brands of phyllo. And I'm kind of particular about my brands. Ladies and gentlemen, this is when you pay attention. <laughs> what is a brand? I like the Athens Philo. Athens Philo. Mm -hmm. But today that's the one I use. We're using Apollo because that's all I found. Oh, great. <laughs> so, so Apollo is also an okay brand. It's an it's okay. Yeah, but I like the Athens. The show was sponsored by Apollo. <laughs> great. But down. I guess we can cut the cameras off. Just kidding. Okay, perfect. We got a melted butter. You're going to need a brush. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at this cute little brush you got. I know. So just apply your butter on the phyllo right here. Turn this over like this. Like this. So butter is the glue for phyllo. Mm -hmm. Olive oil could be used too? You can do half butter, half olive oil. Mm -hmm. You can just do olive oil? Um, you can. I like. What's the I reason like you would not? I like the butter because it gives it more taste and it helps it brown. I love the way she speaks when she talks <laughs> about butter. That's what Julia would say. She's so lovely, isn't she? <laughs> she loves butter, a friend of mine. <laughs> yes, I'm with you. I'm with you, Vivian. 
Okay, so did you see that I did how I did this? Yes. Okay, so I put And the reason in. you do that is so it's stronger, so it doesn't break? Or is there any other yes. reason? Yes. I folded this over once, buttered it, then I put the filling in, and then I start to roll it like this. I think the reason you fold it twice is so it's stronger of a base so you can actually roll yes, it. Right? Yes, okay, yes, yes. Good. Definitely. But kind of butter in between. So this is not really, really tight inside. It's kind of loose. It's a little, a little bit. bit loose. Yeah. yeah. And is that then, okay? Oh, yeah. This is the way you want it. And then you butter it. And then this is how we spiral it. Because this is how we do it at our restaurant. And oh, so this is what you do. You just roll it like that? Yeah. You just roll it like that. Tight. Tight. Very you tight. But you try not to break the dough? Well, even if it breaks, it's still okay. okay. So this is fine. And then once you get used to this, it's very easy. You can go really fast. You can do a whole bunch of them. I mean, we did like almost 3,000 of these for today's Bite of Seattle. 3,000 of those. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> are you making... Are you making them at the table, at the booth, where, they, where the people are walking? Oh, by? no. We made them at the restaurant. So you we've made been, them ahead. We've been working long hours making these. Yeah, yeah. because 3,000 is quite a big And number. then we have them at the booth today. We put them in the oven. So at the restaurant, what we do, so I pre-made some today. I was just looking in there. And uh, Oh, look how beautiful that is. This is what they turn out like. Wow. Bravo. And uh, so what we like to do at the restaurant, though, because we are modern Greek cuisine, we'd like to do something a little bit different, a little bit more fun. In Greece, you would just get your spanakopita like that. But at Divine... But because this is America... <laughs> it's America, and I like to have fun. I yes. mean, I want to experiment a little bit. We've come up with a spicy feta spread, which is made with uh, feta cheese and roasted poblano peppers. Oh, wow. And we blend it in the Cuisinart. It's pretty easy. Um, you put a little bit of vinegar in it, and that's all it is. You roast poblano pepper, spicy feta, and then we... So when you say spicy feta, the, the feta is spiced no, by no, the no. poblano? No, no, no. Yeah, exactly. So it's feta, roasted poblano, uh -huh. and... And vinegar. And vinegar. And you put all that in the food processor? Food processor. And then you that's blend it. the heck out of it, and this is what you have? This is what you have. This is one of our spreads. And you put it on the plate like this. And then you take your spanakopita, place it over the top, and we like to make it a little bit fancy with a little balsamic drizzle. That's almost Greek, because that's Italy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you could put a little bit of fresh arugula, fresh parsley, Ooh. and it ends up looking like this. And I just think it's really pretty and very tasty. So here wow. you go. I'm uh, impressed. You made 3,000 of these today? Mm-hmm. There you go. Oh, oh you no, ready? oh no. I'm not eating. Yes, oh, you, you I must am eating try. I drink and I eat. I do everything <laughs> here. Okay, let me, uh, well, um, yes, let me try this. And we say Kali Orixi. Kali Orixi. That means bon appetit. Mm -hmm. I, I was just guessing, but. 